All right, hello everyone. So in this video, we're gonna go through three additional examples of finding the area um, so we're comfortable with each of the different ways. So here we wanna find the area um, to the left of negative 1.21. All right, so if I draw my normal curve here, right, never touches the axis, so it'll get close, but not quite. In the middle, we put the mean, which for the standard normal curve, um, or this should be distribution is zero. Right, so to standardize it, we write put zero in the middle and write everything in terms of z-score. So everything's in terms of standard deviation. Okay, so negative 1.21 will go to the left or to the right. So since it's negative, it'll go to the left, right? So it's about one in this direction. So here's negative 1.21. Okay, so it's asking for the left of that value. So if I look to the left, it's asking everything to the left. So we're looking for sort of this tail here. So to remember, if I want to find the area of a tail, I know each side of the normal distribution is 0.5, right? So it's symmetric, so each side is 50%. So if I want to find the shaded area here, the table tells me between zero and Z, right? So the table will tell me this region here, and it tells me at the bottom, right? So between zero and the Z value, so that region there. So if I have the 0.5 and I subtract off this region, then I'll be left with just this part, right? So if I need to give, I get rid of this region from the table, I'll be left with this one. Okay, so if I look up 1.21 in the table, so remember the left side will go up to 1.2, then I have to go over to add on a one. So if I add on 0.01, I'm at 1.21. So that'll be here. So 1.2 with the one up top, so 0.3869. Okay, so I wanna do the 0.5 minus that 3869. Let me write that out first. So 0 0.5 minus the 0 0.3869. All right. Sorry, a little sloppy. So if I do that in my calculator, so 0 0.5 minus the 0 0.3869, that'll leave me with 1131. So 1131 will be my final answer. Again, that's area, so it'll never be negative, obviously. Um, so um, right, the amount of space under the curve can never be negative. All right, let's look at one more. Okay, so here we want to find, let me do my curve. So always do a sketch, so zero in the middle, to the right of negative 1.52. So negative, that'll be to the left, so negative 1.52. Okay, notice it says to the right, so I want to find to the right, so everything to the right of this value, so basically all of this. Okay, so let's think about this. So if I wanna find, the table will tell me between zero and the z value, so I, I could get this from the table. So this value comes from the table, but basically it's this value plus this entire other side, right? And we know this entire other side would be 0.5, right? Because each side is 50%. So what I can do is I could take this area from the table and then add on the entire other side of 0.5. Okay, so let's look in the table. So 1.52. So I go to 1.5 here, and then I go over to 2. So that'll be here. So 4, 3, 5, 7. Okay, so if I label this on my diagram, so this will be this area here, the space here will be 0.4357. Okay, so I want to add that on to the 0.5. So this 4357 plus this entire 0.5. Yeah, 4357. Okay, so if I go to my calculator, so that 0.4357, add on the entire 0.5 from the other side. So that'll give me about 93.7, 93.57. So 0.9357. Okay, so 0.93. Right, make sure to show the work as well. So the 4357 plus the 0 0.5 will get, will get you this value. All right, let's look at one final one. Okay, so now it's asking for between two values. Okay, so we're not gonna talk about if the values are on the same side, because if I look at this one, one's negative, right? So negative 1.07 would be over to the left here, negative 1.07. And then 0.56 would be on the right side because it's positive, right? So 0.56 would be somewhere over here. Not as far away because it's only 0.5. So we'll do a little bit closer to zero. 
Um, so I want to find this area in between the two values. Well, if I think about this, the table will tell me between the z-score and zero. So I could get this value from the table for 1.07. And I could get this value from the table, so between zero here and 0.56 here. So I could get this value from the table as well. So basically it's asking for this area and this area all together. So what I can do is I can add them together, right? So this um, blue plus this blue will give me this entire area. So once I find these two separate, we want separate, I can add them. Okay, so let's look up 1.07 first. So if I pull up my table, so 1.0, and then if I go over to 7, which will be over here. So 1.0, if I go over to 7, that'll be here. 1.0 and 7, so 3577. Alright, so this area here would be 0 0.3577. And then I could add on the right side as well. So between 0 and 56. So let's go to 0 0.56. So we go to 0 0.5 and then add on the 6. So if I go over with my mouse here, 56 would be here. 2, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we go back. So this would be. 0.2123. So that'll correspond to this area. So I want the entire region between them. So this one from the table and this one from the table, so I can add these together. So if I go to my calculator, I can add these together. So the 0.3577 add on the 0.2123. My answer will be 0.57. Okay, this one actually works out nicely. But since everything, if you notice, everything in the table is to four decimal places, right? All the areas because right, the z-scores are on the top and the bottom, but the areas themselves are four decimals. So what I would do, I like to do, I always like to keep it four. So if I get 57, I'll just add on two zeros. So what, 0.5700, um, just to keep it consistent. So everything is to four decimals. Um, so those would be. So main takeaway, just make sure to always draw a diagram. And then remember the table tells you between zero and the z-score. So sometimes you have to use 0.5, sometimes you're looking for those two. If they're on the same side, we'll talk about that um, at a later time. Um, but different sides, you could add the two values together.